G'day guys, well here we are and the lovely people at Carbotech in Sydney have been nice enough to let me film in the showroom and if you are in Sydney and you haven't been down here, why the bloody hell not? Get in, I guarantee you, you'll walk away with a lighter wallet. Today, this is not my exact saw, it's in the garage, but the CTS. The reason that I finally, after nearly five years of woodworking, decided to pick up a table saw and beside it is the reason that I haven't had a table saw for that period. Until this came out about a month or two ago, the job site, JS Saw from SawStop, and I've always wanted a SawStop, was the smallest one on offer. That of course has that technology which will not cut off your fingers. But as you can see, simply side by side, while it's a pretty small saw, this is littler. And for me, that's a good thing. Because, as you probably well know, I have a one car garage with a car in it and with more people working in small spaces, I can see this particular model of saw stop becoming very popular. And there's another great thing about it too, the price. Here in Australia, it's just over 1500. One of the leading brands of table saw, the little DeWalt 10 inch that a lot of hobbyist makers use, I believe it's coming in at nearly 1200 Australian dollars. So for $300 extra, it's the same power, it's a tiny bit smaller, yes, but it doesn't cut your fingers off. And for the size and that safety reason is why I've held off on buying the heart of the workshop until this model of saw has come out. Back home and I also picked up the optional stand that comes along with the saw, just temporary. I'm gonna build it into a bench eventually. This is a one man lift. Now that is heavy, that's just over 30 kilograms, but the whole point is I could pick that up easily enough by myself. I'm not a massive fan of unboxing, but I wanted to see just how quickly and easily this thing went together because I have seen other table saw videos, like big proper table saws, and they can take hours and hours and hours. I was expecting this to be simple, but well, you'll see. And that's it. Now, I'm usually one for reading manuals and stuff. I have purposely done what everyone usually does and figuring this out as I go along. It appears that those are the clips that will hold the table saw to the stand. And out of the box, that, that, that's it. There's one thing in the box, the saw. Nothing else. And I, I think that is literally it. It took longer to set up the stand. There is nothing. Riving knife is already in there. Blade is already in there. Storage, everything, miter gauge, shield, that's set up. I cannot believe that. It took about 10 minutes to set up the base and out of the box you have a working saw. I don't know if that's normal, but I am gobsmacked. There is nothing to set up. Okay, and that is not an exaggeration. You could cut straight away in this current format, but I wanted to, like you should with any new tool, make sure it's tuned up. Here are a few little things that I needed to do. The first one being leveling the zero clearance insert plate. It was already pretty good, but just in a couple of spots, I needed to grab the onboard Allen key, give them a few quarter turns until it was nice and flush with the aluminium top. And I didn't need to resort to the manual, I just quickly figured out that the fence soars underneath for easy transport and then has two separate positions which you can hook it onto. And it is super quick, it locks down at both ends, it's the rack and pinion style. The fine adjustment knob is very smooth and you give it a bit of a bash, push it in and that will lock and there is no play in that. There is a way to adjust the fence but I found that mine was perfectly parallel to the Midas slot and to the blade straight out of the box. This is a nifty little feature. Now obviously contact with metal will trigger off your saw stops emergency brake. Your fence is aluminium. So there are these little plastic guides in there which unless you press them in to override them will stop your blade from getting too close to that fence. When you do press them in, you can come in contact. So be aware of that or it's going to become very expensive very quickly. The two different gauges on the built-in ruler are for the two separate fence positions and that's a very smooth operation. Even at full extension, when you press down on the fence, there is almost no play whatsoever. Yeah, it bounces up a little bit, but if your fence is moving upwards during a cut, you're doing something wrong. 
It also has this flip-out L-style fence, which has two height positions. This first one is, of course, to provide support when you are at full extension. However, it can also be raised up to the table's height and act as a low fence for when you're cutting very thin materials. Breaking out the tape measure and confirming with the scale on the actual saw, and it looks like 625 millimeters is your maximum width of cut. In other words, you can rip a full sheet of goods straight down the guts in half. Right, let's look at the riving knife situation, and it is that quick. It literally takes seconds. One little toolless change red lever in there, click it up, pull off the knife, and this is how you install the additional pawls and blade guard. It only takes mere moments to switch over from your riving knife to the full blade guard setup. There's no dust extraction as this is a job site saw effectively. I don't think they're terribly worried about that. That is so easy. Now let's get to the elephant in the room. If you take a look at that arbor, you will notice there is no space there. Meaning that one of the big trade-offs perhaps you have to consider when purchasing the CTS is that it will not take a dado stack. However, back in the Carbotex store, I actually filmed the job site saw and you will see it is nice and long there and will take the dado stack. This is real time. This is the blade raise. I think I measured it in at about seven or eight seconds. Full depth of cut is basically 80 millimeters. And that is me figuring out how to tilt the blade. Firstly, it's very intuitive. <laughs> and secondly, it goes from zero to 45 in under a second. It also has that really cool little micro. I didn't measure how quick it is, but it is a fairly small adjustment. So you could just throw it backwards and forwards and then use that micro guide to lock in your perfect angle. We'll check that in just a second. To lock the blade at said angle, you simply push that micro just in and to unlock it, just pull it back towards you. As I said, I've never touched a table saw before. I was literally filming and working out how these controls operate all in the one motion. It was super, super easy. Speaking of adjust, Carpetech were also nice enough to give me this digital blade miter measurer thingy and popping it on, the blade was pretty close just with that coarse throw motion. If you're doing construction work, that's not bad. However, it is a little bit out. So at 90 degrees, I want that to be a very true 90. And I finally succumb and broke out the manual to learn how to adjust this. I'll take you through the steps as I think it is kind of important. So when I put my square up against the blade, we'll be able to see there is in fact a very small gap down there at the bottom. So what you need to do is loosen these two screws at either end of the trunnion and then that central screw with the onboard allen key allows a super easy and micro adjustment look at that tick 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 until you get to 90 absolutely perfect in the zero lock position tighten up the outside screws and you're good to go just double check it does flick back to zero Oh, but you may also need to, of course, get the pointer. This is really simple. It's just got one screw. Loosen that up. Adjust it till it's pointing to what you think is zero. And your visual guide is back in play. That little switch next to the power button is the safety override. Effectively, if you want to cut wet wood, aluminium, something that would usually set your automatic brake off, you can put it into override mode. That flashing red light occurs when it is powering up. There's a whole picture on the side. In fact, both sides of the machine have excellent instructions for changing the brake, changing the blade, and what all the different combinations of blinking lights mean. The important thing is, that's ready to go. Let's fire up. Yeah, yeah, there, there is no soft start on this. It goes from zero to hero instantly. Rightio, so believe it or not, this is my first ever cut on a table saw. If you've enjoyed the video, there's a longer version. Pop over to my channel and you can check that out. Otherwise, pop down into Carbotech where you can see the CTS or links are below where you can just buy one right now. This is my first little table saw and I am loving it. So much, I decided to keep that little off cut as a memento. Don't forget to subscribe here at Carbotech. Come visit me at Fix It Fingers. And I'll see you on the next one because there'll be a lot of table saw related content coming up in the future, including, you know, perhaps a uh, dust extractor. See you then.